Hello and welcome to Pulse Check with Archer Nursing, where nursing comes to life. In this podcast, you give us 15 minutes of your day and we'll take one complicated nursing topic and make it easy. Ready for nursing to be fun? I'm Morgan, and today we're tackling multiple sclerosis. So as always, let's kick it off with our practice question. The nurse is teaching a client newly diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, or MS. Which of the following statements by the client would indicate a correct understanding of the teaching? We have A, if I experience double vision, I should put an eye patch on both eyes for a few hours. B, planning my activities should help me manage the fatigue. C, I should plan to take a hot bath for my muscle spasms, or D, the disease may cause me to have an increased sensitivity to pain. So tuck away what you think the right answer is, and we will circle back to it at the end of the episode. First, let's go into detail about multiple sclerosis, or MS, a condition that turns the body's own defense system against itself targeting a very essential feature of the nervous system, our myelin. So to really get it, we need to narrow in on what that is and really what's going on at a microscopic level. Basically, I want you to think of your nervous system as electrical wires running through your body. They are carrying signals from your brain to your muscles, your skin, your organs, literally everywhere. Now, those wires are wrapped in a protective coating, which is our myelin. Basically, it's the insulation around an extension cord, and that insulation doesn't just protect the wire, it also makes sure that the signal can travel both quickly and efficiently, getting it where it needs to go. So what happens in multiple sclerosis? Basically, the immune system gets confused. For reasons that we don't fully understand, we do though know that genetics, the environment, and maybe even viral triggers will play a role, the immune system starts to attack and destroy that myelin sheath, both in the brain and the spinal cord. This is a process that we call demyelination. So basically, we are stripping away that insulation from our electrical wires of the nervous system. And obviously when this happens, our electrical signals that are traveling along the nerves get disrupted. They are slowed down, they short circuit, or sometimes they just don't make it through at all. If you need an analogy, you can kind of think of it as like one of those strands of Christmas lights that you put up on the tree or outside and some of the wires are frayed. So the bulb might flicker or go out. The power supply is there, you know, it's still plugged into the outlet, but that wire got stripped so the signal can't travel through to the bulb and make it function properly. That is, in essence, the nervous system of someone with MS. Now, what their symptoms will look like basically depend on where those frayed wires are. So where has the body attacked the myelin and demyelinated those nerves? For example, let's say the optic nerve is affected. That would then cause maybe blurred or double vision. We call that optic neuritis. If the spinal cord is involved, you could see weakness, spasticity, or problems walking. When the cerebellum is affected, we have issues with balance or tremors. We can have bladder and bowel control issues if the nerves headed to that region are frayed. So really, it can cause symptoms all throughout the body. It just depends on which nerves are demyelinated. Now, one thing to note is that in MS, it is a condition with relapses and remissions. So it kind of ebbs and flows. During a relapse, we get really active inflammation. The immune system is attacking the myelin. It's causing new symptoms, worsening old symptoms. Just everything is flaring up. You'll hear some people call it a flare up. Then when the inflammation settles down, the body goes on and tries to repair the damage. And that is a period of remission. So their symptoms get better. That inflammation isn't acting up. Over time, we get periods of relapse, remission, relapse, remission. And those repeated attacks can cause scar tissue or sclerosis to form, which permanently interferes with nerve transmission. So that is no good. We do not want that to progress. 
A big concept to understand is that things can get a lot worse with stress and with heat. So thinking back to the physiology here, myelin, that insulation, is helping the signal move smoothly through that nerve, even under stress. So when it's damaged, increases in body temperature, you know, increases in that stress, that can slow or block nerve conduction. So very common that clients with MS have heat intolerance. They feel weak, fatigued, or foggy when they get overheated. Even if it's just like a warm bath or a hot shower, that can really kick it into overdrive based on how those signals are moving through the nerves. So that being said, what do we look for? What do we do about it? Let's move into our case study for the episode. We have Sarah, a 29-year-old elementary school teacher. She's presenting to the neurology clinic today for an evaluation. She looks exhausted, anxious, and when you ask, you know, hey, what brings you in today, Sarah? She tells you, I've been dropping things lately. Like, I'm not usually a klutz, but I cannot hold on to things. Last week, I woke up and I could barely see out of my right eye. It cleared up after a few days, but it just really freaked me out. She went into her PCP, and when she described those symptoms, they referred her out to the neurology clinic. So that was the correct move, because think about the combo of these symptoms. Suddenly, she's having weakness. Her legs feel heavy, she's tired, and she had this weird few days where she couldn't see out of her right eye. That is not normal. That definitely all screams neuro when we think about transient vision changes, weakness, fatigue. We're thinking some signal is not going how it needs to go. Let's dig into that transient vision change a little more. There's a few kind of key buzzwords that you should have on your radar, both for exams and in practice. So ask Sarah, you know, hey, what did it feel like? How long did it last? Was there any pain? Are there associated symptoms? You know, get a little bit of a meatier explanation to that change. She tells you, it felt like a curtain came over one eye, and even moving that right eye was painful. So that curtain coming down is a big red flag. With MS, we're thinking optic neuritis. We can also have some ocular problems, but it is a clear flag that something is going on. Connecting this back to the anatomy of MS, remember that the optic nerve is part of the central nervous system. It's covered in that myelin sheath, that insulation for good electrical conduction in our nervous system. And with MS, the immune system is attacking that myelin. So for Sarah, it attacked the uh, myelin of that optic nerve. The optic nerve got inflamed. It slowed down the transmission of visual information. And that's why she got that transient vision change, feeling like that curtain came down over her eye. The next thing she talked about was muscle weakness and fatigue. She tells you, walking up the stairs felt like wading through water. I'm slow. I'm heavy. Remember, she mentioned she was dropping things all the time. Why would that be happening? All right. The motor neurons carrying signals from the brain to the muscle, they're not conducting efficiently without the myelin to speed up our electrical impulses, muscles aren't getting a strong, consistent message, so they tire out really quickly. Some other symptoms that you'll want to ask about, tingling, dizziness, and difficulty concentrating. Also, remember the heat sensitivity. Heat sensitivity is super classic for MS. Like we explained, when that temperature rises, nerve conduction can slow even further, especially without myelin, so symptoms worsen. That is definitely something, if you've got MS on the brain, to go ahead and ask about. Your client might not think of it off the bat. You might need to kind of dig into that symptom. Okay, so... We don't know for sure that Sarah has MS. You know, the symptoms all kind of point towards something with the nervous system. So our next step is going to be an MRI. We need to do an MRI of the brain and the spinal cord looking for demyelinating lesions. Basically, these are going to be bright white patches that show us damage to the myelin. 
So the provider is going to order that MRI. They are also going to do some blood work, okay? Because there are other things this could be. We need to look out for other autoimmune disorders, some inflammatory markers. You know, maybe there is an infectious cause. So we need to do a nice workup and make sure we're not missing anything. Once that MRI comes back, again, looking for those bright white patches showing that, hey, the myelin has been demyelinated here, that's what's really going to help the provider make that diagnosis. And let me say, this is an overwhelming diagnosis. Some people have never heard of MS. Some people have definitely heard, and you know, it's a chronic condition, so it's very scary. Make sure you as the nurse are taking the time to really break this down in plain language. Help them understand this is not their fault. This is an autoimmune disorder. You know, your own immune system is kind of breaking down that insulation on your nerves, using terms like that so that they help understand why they're having these specific symptoms. And that will kind of lead into why we're going to do the treatment that we're going to do. We start off right away with high dose corticosteroids. So remember, steroids overall, they decrease inflammation. And MS is a disease of inflammation. The immune system is attacking the myelin. Those nerves are inflamed. So we're going to get those steroids on board immediately. They are not going to cure the MS. Let's get that clear. We don't have a cure for MS. But we are trying to treat the symptoms and get that inflammation down. That will help shorten the length and severity of a relapse basically by turning down the immune system's attack so the nervous system can recover. Now, once we kind of get in a stable place, another intervention that could be prescribed is interferon therapy. This might help reduce the frequency of future relapses by modulating the immune response. So this is trying to get a little closer to the core or root cause of symptoms, trying to kind of turn down that immune system from going and attacking that myelin, okay? Now, as the nurse, what other non-pharma interventions? The big thing we're going to be struggling with is fatigue. Remember, she told you she was dropping things. It was hard to go up the stairs. She feels like she's moving through water. That is a really challenging part of MS that impacts their day-to-day -day life. So how do we conserve energy? All right, let's plan activities around the morning when you're well-rested. And bonus, that's a cooler part of the day because remember, heat is really going to exacerbate symptoms. We need to teach her to pace herself, take breaks so that we conserve that energy and we don't exhaust her, okay? And remember, avoid heat, super hot baths, prolonged times in the sun, likely to trigger a flare-up. We also want to make sure she gets physical therapy, strengthen those weak muscles, maintain mobility. And occupational therapy, OT as well. There are some adaptive techniques that she can utilize. Remember, she's a teacher, so let's think about what she's doing. She might be writing or typing a lot, fatiguing those muscles. How about voice-to-text software that can help with her, you know, when her hands are feeling clumsy and weak and fatigued, she can use that for her lesson plans, et cetera. So OT is going to help kind of find those adaptive things to reduce fatiguing her muscles. And PT is going to help strengthen those weak muscles and maintain the mobility. We want to keep her as mobile as possible, but help her pace herself so she doesn't get to the point of exhaustion. So if we bring it all back together, really thinking about our key takeaway for MS, the underlying disease is autoimmune. Our immune system is attacking the myelin sheath, that insulation around our nerves, which is disrupting the communication from the brain to the body. And every symptom we talked about from that optic neuritis, where it felt like a curtain was coming down over her eyes, to the weak muscles, dizziness, fatigue, all of those things come back to that disrupted signal. So what are we going to do? We're going to turn down that inflammation, corticosteroids, interferon, and we're going to try to enhance her quality of life by making sure she rests and paces herself and we get her therapy with PT and OT. MS can be life-changing, but it doesn't have to stop their life. We need to help them learn how to work with it. 
And that being said, it brings us back to our practice question about discharge teaching. So let's see now if you can get to that right answer and understand why. You're teaching that client with MS, which statement would indicate correct understanding. You had A, if I experience double vision, I'll put an eye patch on both eyes for a few hours. B, I'll plan my activities and that will help manage fatigue. C, I should plan to take a hot bath for my muscle spasms. Or D, this disease may cause increased sensitivity to pain. Which of those statements indicate understanding? For your client newly diagnosed with MS, you should have said, and I'm sure you did, answer choice B. We are learning to work with this MS instead of against it, and we are planning activities to help manage fatigue. So earlier in the day, at cooler times, taking frequent breaks. Fatigue is a hallmark and really, truly debilitating symptom of MS. Remember, it's all coming back to those nerve signals that are slowed down by demyelination. That just means that every movement and thought, it takes more and more effort, so they tire out quickly. Manage that fatigue by conserving energy. Plan activities strategically spread throughout the day with frequent breaks to avoid overexertion. And remember, heat makes it worse, so do activities in the cooler morning hours. All right, key takeaway, MS disrupts that communication from brain to body. So managing symptoms is about protecting those fragile pathways. Help your clients conserve energy, overheating, plan your days intentionally, and you will help them live a quality life with their MS diagnosis. All right, future nurses, that is a wrap. If you found this pod helpful, I'd love to continue supporting your nursing journey through nursing school, the NCLEX, continuing ed, and beyond. Archer Nursing has you covered with on-demand video lectures, high-yield question banks, live case study reviews, and so, so much more. We want to help you master tough concepts and make it fun. So join us over at archerreview.com. Follow us on socials at Archer Nursing for more free nursing tips and study resources. Thanks for tuning in to Pulse Check with Archer Nursing. I'm Dr. Morgan Taylor, and I'll see you back next time.